the future of industrial engineering in the age of AI. I have listed some of the potential risks regarding job loss for 3D industrial designers. And the most important is regarding the automated design. So there are a wide variety of platforms, some of them also free, that are slowly becoming better and more sophisticated. So these tools can automate many of the tasks that are performed by 3D designer, such as sketching, modeling, rendering, simulation of various industrial products. We already saw that platforms like Midjourney and DALI had a massive impact on uh, 3D artists and graphic design, but these platforms are slowly transferring also to the field of 3D. If you're going to check one of those currently free available options, it, uh, we can go to csm.ai and we can see that we can do also video to 3D or image to 3D, but there are other platforms that can also define a 3D model based on a text input. There is also a shift in demand for industrial design and engineering services that are slowly sh shifting from the traditional manufacturing towards new application, such as healthcare. So it's important to adapt to these changes. There is also the worldwide competition from overseas. So this has highly influenced the, the domain in the last decades as 3D industrial design services are offered at a lower prices in, uh, in various areas. So that has a high influence on traditional 3D design uh, forms. One, one important aspect regarding this is also the design award contest. So large companies have started to rely mostly on design awards contest. One of those platforms is Dezol. Rather than hiring their own designers to come up with new products and ideas. And the main advantage is that if you're going to host a design contest, you're going to attract a higher pool of talented designers from all over the world at only a fraction of the cost. So if you are not familiar with Dezol, just, just take a look at that platform. Dezol stands for Design on Demand. And as we can see, there are large companies that are clients to, to this platform. If you're going to go up to the contest section, we're going to see what are the currently open design contests. Also the price pool when they will be closed, what is the company? So we see over here NL, another large companies like DuPont. So what are the actions that can be taken to mitigate these risks? So most importantly is to adapt to the new AI powered 3D modeling tools. That means that 3D designers should make use of these, these software solutions in order to develop better workflows for their case study. One, one important aspect is also regarding networking. So 3D industrial design engineer should always try to stay informed regarding the new trends within the industry. And what is most important is to be flexible. So that means that designers need to adapt to the changing 3D modeling landscape. And in some cases, this could also mean uh, that they should also take on new responsibilities. So let's take a look at what are the risks of 3D industrial design to be automated. I have listed over here three websites. So the first one is from 2015, when I also started to to read various aspects regarding 3D automation and what will that mean for various jobs. As we can see over here, if I will go to Art Design and Entertainment, on this platform, it was stated like this, so commercial and industrial designers. 
and back in 2015 we see that the potential risk of this job being automated was quite low so only 3.7 percent compare that to the default uh, bookkeep shopper that was something like 97 percent so back then there wasn't a high risk regarding this if i will go forward this is another website from uh, bbc and over here we're gonna see that uh, the job is listed at, as design and development engineers so let's check take a look at this design and development engineer find out automation risk so this was also quite un unlikely so around three percent and we also see the number of uh, employees in in thousand over here in uh, in the uk so this was from uh, the bbc website but keep in mind that this was 2015 so eight years ago if you're gonna check this platform so we robot we robots take my job industrial engineering we're gonna see that the risk level has grown up significantly somewhere around 44 percent calculated and also by pulling to around 37 percent so we see that there is a trend involving a moderate risk for this um, for this job. And in order to highlight this potential risk, I decided to make a case study. So a case study of a molded plywood chair. As you can see, manufacturing molded plywood involves heating and bending. Of, um, of single sheet of plywood into the desired shape and uh, for this case study I decided to make use of the iconic molded plywood chair from Ayamas and we can see various production stages so these photos are not exactly from this chair but we can better understand how those profiles are formed within these molds and they are also then uh, heated in order to bend the plywood. So the case study makes use of this plywood sketch drawing. As we can see, there are two pieces uh, molded. So the one for the backrest and the one for the seating. I don't know exactly who created this sketch. We see over here in 2011 there's a signature but over here I put a Google search image and we see that this plywood chair appears in various uh, posts so both on Pinterest or on YouTube and the case study involved making use of this sketch in order to obtain some 3d models so I made use of the common sense machine platform I will go to the website 3d.csm.ai I have various mm, models over here. Some of them are ready, some of them are still in training. But for the plywood, this is the experimental mode. And we can already see from the preview that this software struggles with depth. So in the case of the bronze statue that I already created a video, we see that the depth for the statue based on that photo are quite decently. But for this plywood chair the perspective really messed up the algorithm as you can see over here within the preview we see some potential views of the model if you're gonna try to match that perspective from the photo with the 3d model so something like this we're gonna see how wrongly the algorithm created the model so you see that the legs of the plywood chair are shaped like this and in this case, the AI make it in a line and position like a third leg for this. Also for the backrest, the model is extruded like this. So we see that the model is quite, quite off. 
one major problem regarding this type of models is that they cannot be used for manufacturing. This is why it's important to have models that are intended for manufacturing, designed using computer-aided design software, where you can then specify the exact thickness of those profiles. As you can see over here, there are just some polygons that define those shape. So this is the experimental um, option. There are also not a lot of settings on this platform. You can just add the image. You cannot define the scale or stuff like that. So those will need also to be slightly adjusted. And within this photo, I have cleared some of the sketching position near that near this. And we can see that we obtain different results as the views of that chair. But again, for the final model, we see that we have this leg over here. And it's completely off and different within the the mesh generated by the AI platform. If you want to take a look at some other case studies, such as this car concept, so this is from Peugeot, you're going to see that from this side, the software was able to obtain some of the shapes of the car, even though so are, some are only as textures, but we see that we have this cutout over here that was also visible on that. But as soon as I will rotate the model, I will see that the scale of the car is quite off. So the car is really stretched. And it has this overall aspect. We see that even in front, it added something similar to a, to exhaust. So that's also quite, quite weird. Also for some other cars, like I have over here some of the initial Cybertruck concept, we see that the models are a little bit better, but they still can only be used as general references. But mostly industrial engineers would be better off just working with, um, with some image references. Over here, as we can see, the same uh, model, just in gray. And uh, since the model had uh, two cars, so I initially tried to see if um, the algorithm will make use of that secondary view in order to better understand the back of the car. If you're going to take a look, it also generated two, two trucks over there. And this is a case study only with one. Again, this is really weird. So we have that front, which is from this perspective, which is the mirrored view of that. If you don't take into account the how wide the car is, you're going to see that it is roughly, let's say, decent. But from this perspective, the model is really off. But if you're going to take a look at this blue car, so the same concept, you're going to see that this this one is a little bit better, but still the the model is way out of proportion. If you're going to take a look at uh, the wheel size and the overall size of the truck. And again, the same problem with very wide cars. Okay, so in order to conclude this, it's not likely for industrial engineers to to be heavily impacted by this. But as we slowly saw back from 2015, where the automation risk was quite low, it slowly evolved. So currently, I'm not sure if it's that high, like 44%. Uh, but there are some aspects regarding this. But an AI platform 
will never be able to define models in the near future that can be then added to manufacturing so where you will have uh, important aspects such as the surface tangency and also for molds what is the, the opening of the mold and uh, the draft of those in order to have an optimal manufacturing production system okay so i hope you find this kind of content useful if so let me know in the comment section what is your opinion regarding the the automation of um, industrial engineering and what is the future within this new age of ai where we see that uh, there are a wide variety of platforms appearing that can obtain some good 3d models okay thanks for watching see you in the next video